Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro, and it's time to review The Banshees of Inna Sharon, directed by Martin McDonough, whose work includes Three Billboards and In Bruges. And the movie stars Colin Farrell and Brennan Gleeson. Colin Farrell's main character, he finds out that Brennan Gleeson, who is his longtime friend, does not want to be friends with him anymore, and he doesn't understand why. The movie's a dark comedy. It's very funny. I have a friend who, like, doesn't believe that there can be a movie about someone just unfriending someone else, and then that be, like, the premise. And, you know, going into the movie, I was like, okay, well, maybe there's, like, more to it. But I was actually gleeful that there wasn't really more to it. Like, this is the premise of the movie. This is the crux of the drama. And we see how far these characters are willing to go. Like, one, to fight for his friendship back. And the other one, to, like, block this person out of their life. And we actually do come to understand, like, why someone would do that. Brandon Gleason plays the one who is trying to unfriend... Colin Farrell. And his motivation is actually really interesting. It's one of the most thought-provoking parts of this film. And we can both see like where he's coming from as well as see like the obvious pettiness in what he's trying to do and like wonder why can't he just be in the middle. I even find myself still like not having all the answers to this character, but I'm actually happy that I don't fully understand him because the character did feel like real enough and I could see where they were coming from just enough that I like that he's a sort of mystery. I also love Colin Farrell's character here, who in the beginning of the movie has most of his identity rooted in his niceness, and he just prides himself on being like a nice guy, even if he is like a little bit dull, but really everybody in the town is to an extent. The setting of the movie is really interesting. This takes place in like an Irish seaside town, very small, very few things to do, like people just go to the pub, like that's pretty much all you can do. No secrets uh, whatsoever. When people say location feels like a character, there's really like no better example than this because the setting informs how the characters make their decisions and who these characters are, like how they're even shaped in the first place in such a fundamental level. I just think that's a very strong example of writing. And it also informs a lot of the comedy in this film because the film is like aware of kind of the absurd situation that these people are in and how like the town is so small that it's almost comical. There's also something existential to this movie that I wasn't expecting going in. Oh yeah. That has to do with the fact that like these people live very insignificant lives and you just kind of get to see how they cope with it in different ways. And what's fascinating is the way that Colin Farrell's character starts to shift the way that he sees his life and his significance as the movie goes on. And the movie becomes surprisingly thought-provoking and also not the kind of movie where there's an easy answer. It's a movie that you're gonna have to think about and that does leave you kind of pondering, which I really appreciated. It really can't be overstated how fucking hilarious this movie is though. Because, you know, when you describe it as this like sort of dark comedy that's concerned with like loneliness and existentialism, you'd really be like, painting a different portrait of this movie. There are just laughs throughout, and these jokes just felt like really well-crafted, and it knew exactly how to play the audience. It also felt like the editing was done with an awareness of where the jokes were and how long you were gonna be laughing. It really did have me and the entire TIFF crowd like laughing hysterically. The jokes are so like well done and clever, like just perfect combinations of like another character setting up a pitch and you don't know how the other character is going to respond and they just fucking slam dunk that shit. You gotta consider the guy a master of this kind of comedy. I, I think the film overall is like, honestly, masterful. Like, really, really well done. I haven't talked to anybody who doesn't think this film was really well made and one of their favorites at the festival. So I can understand, you know, if the ending like loses you a little bit and if you're a little bit confused about some motivations for some actions. You know, I am too, but I kind of like and I can relish in that sort of confusion. I think this might be Colin Farrell's best performance, and he's given us a lot of great performances in the last few years with Lanthimos' films and then after Yang. But this one is like just pitch perfect. He's hilarious in it, but he's almost never aware of like how he's being funny. You know, he is genuinely like hurt and offended at the very things that we're laughing at. And at the same time, like it almost feels like he is, you know, a master of comedic timing. He has so many good facial expressions in this movie. Like there's so much face comedy going on here. I do agree this might be his best performance and it's very nice that he will probably be nominated in best actor for it. I think that's happening. He's definitely getting nominated. Like, I think he's some people's favorite performance of the year too. Like people who don't <laughs> like the whale might think, oh yeah, well actually this is my favorite performance. Brennan Gleeson I think is also like great here. He's the perfect fit. Some people I've talked to don't think he does quite as much 
And that's fair. Like, he doesn't do quite as much as Colin Farrell. And honestly, he doesn't even have, like, the standout scenes that Cary Condon has. But he is in the movie a lot, and I do think his performance was really well done. And I think it's a strength when you don't end up thinking too hard about, like, somebody's performance and how big it went. Because ultimately, like, the character worked for me, and he embodied that. It felt very lived in, and I really liked this performance. I hope to see it get nominated. I think it probably will. There are people who say it's his best performance. I don't know about that. Like, I think I would maybe say Calvary yeah. was a better performance, or, or just more going on maybe for him. But I'd be more than happy for this to be his first Oscar nomination as mm -hmm. well. And then there's another one, I think, that could be an Oscar nominated performance here, Carrie Condon. She's really funny in this movie. Her character gets some of the standout comedic moments in the whole thing. And in some ways she can be a breath of fresh air in this movie from all the men. She'll like kind of call out like the way that others are behaving in a way that's really funny. And she got applause moments from the audience. And yeah, mid, that mid made me applause. think, okay, she will probably get nominated for the Oscar in this yeah. movie. And she's in it a lot too. Like she's in it more than I thought. Her character has a lot of screen time and she does go through an arc. And it's really satisfying because she's almost the one that we can relate to the most. And so her character is almost like built in to have moments that work well for us as an audience. So I actually think that will get nominated. I would put her in my top five right now. Another performance I really liked was Barry Kogan. He plays the like dumbest person in the town and he, he does it so well. What a perfect casting choice. I don't know yeah. why he plays like idiot so well. But he's really, really funny in this too. I think that maybe there's a world where he's double nominated with Brendan Gleeson. I don't think it's mm. likely, but I, I, I think he might be like in the 10. I don't know, maybe. Me. Now, one thing that surprised me, because I didn't think this was a strength of three billboards. I thought this was maybe one of the weaknesses of it. But here, the cinematography is outstanding. It's not just the way that they capture the Irish hillsides, which, you know, it's easy to see the beauty there because the landscapes are so beautiful themselves. But the way they did the interiors w was beautiful. It felt like they were shooting with, you know, lantern light and practical light. And some of these places are so dark that if there's a corner and there's no like light in it, it's just pure blackness. Bravo to the cinematographer for taking the movie to, I think, the n another level, especially for a comedy. Like we're not even expecting to get such lush cinematography, but like here we have it. And I think that could also get nominated for an Maybe. Oscar. I think it is Ben Davis's best work. And then we have some more really good work from Carter Burwell, who I think this is better than his score for Three Billboards even. I thought he did a really amazing job. It felt very fitting. And I feel like even though maybe a lot of people aren't predicting it right now, I think he's going to get nominated at the end of the day. Like, I feel like that's going to happen. Yeah, I think it could go either way. It's not the most showy score. You know, there's some good, like, vocals in the beginning. I mean, I think the standout overall is the writing here, as we said. It's great. I also think the editing would deserve a nomination because I think the comedy was so on point. And like I said, it's obvious that they made room for the last in the scenes, which just goes to show how deep of an understanding the editor had of the comedic timing. It really, every joke landed. You know, overall, I would give this film a nine out of 10. I would give this film a nine out of 10. I wasn't sure if it was an eight or a nine, but I feel like I am gonna like this more on the second viewing. And yeah. the more I think about it, the more I do like it. There's not a lot to knock here. And as far as awards go, you know, we already kind of talked about how we think it's getting three acting nominations. I'm not really sure if any of those are gonna win, but I think the movie also has a really good shot in Best Picture now, especially because we have a lot of these movies that feel like they're dropping or sinking. And this one, as we've said, is a movie everybody really likes. I mean, especially if you got two or three acting nominations, the writing is amazing. It's definitely gonna get an original screenplay nomination. I even felt like, it could win. That's hard to say though, because you have everything everywhere in Fableman's yeah, in that category. Yeah, if this category. wasn't adapted, I would think, ooh. I think this might even be like one of the top contenders for Best Picture, and then it might be like a top five. And if it is, then you, you think, is there a director nomination? Is right. there an editing nomination? Like, right, on its best day, I, I think it could get a lot. I think it could, on its very best day, get like editing, cinematography, score. I don't know, that'll put you at like an eight or nine nomination haul. If, I don't think it'll day. get all that. But I, it's gonna get a healthy bunch of nominations. Let's just say that. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. How small is your small town?